Greetings, Sense Daniels here. This is a, a quick demonstration of how to use Google Spreadsheets to calculate, very simple calculation of continuously compounded return. In this case, I have set up a column with a monthly cost of 5,000, and here is my wishful thinking of monthly earnings of 5,000. 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. And the calculation is pretty straightforward. However, let's look at the formula. I'm using natural log of n, the natural log n, which is ln, and I'm taking C3, which is the earnings, dividing it by my monthly cost. And as you can see, uh, <clears throat> my return for this month is zero. The next month, if I if I make 10,000, my compounded, continuously compounded return is 0.69%, 69%, which is a very good return. Uh, if we go down further, 20,000, you see I make 138% in return, 179% in return. 207% in return, 230% return, 248% return. These are incredibly fabulous numbers, dream numbers for any business. Now, again, the formula is LN, which is natural logarithm, divided by monthly earnings, or rather monthly earnings divided by monthly cost. Now, let's go to the real, to a, a more real world maybe. And we have <clears throat> a random number that I have created here. You can see rand between. I'm saying in my wishful thinking, I'm making, <clears throat> I can make anywhere between a thousand to twenty thousand dollars a month. That's wishful thinking. It's also, uh, I've, I set a boundary of one thousand dollars. I, <clears throat> I would be, I have to set some kind of boundary. I could set it at zero. Uh, but I'm you know, wishful thinking I will make at least $1,000 in a month. So there's my RAND between, and here's the cost. My costs don't change. It's always $5,000. But here is the uh, random. This is automatically gender generated, RAND between. And here's my return. So on this month, we'll call it... Let's see, I'll, I'll go ahead and put in some months here. January, February. Let's see if Google is smart enough to figure out that I'm putting in calendars. And kind of. <laughs> That's kind of actually quite strange. March. All right, now let's try it again. January, February, March. Now I'm going to drag these down. It should fill in automatically. It didn't. Okay, that's not good. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. And you notice the numbers over here are changing randomly as it as the spreadsheet updates. Now, why would I use a random number? Because well. I don't. I can't control the future, and I'm taking best guesses. So even with my best guess, I could be wrong. And random is pretty close to a good way of guessing for wrong. So if I'm anticipating problems with cash flow, I can use this to look into my potential future and say, hmm, I might need to cover. I might need to cover this expense because here. My my ne I'm a negative return. Here I'm a negative return. Here I'm positive, uh, 134%. This one I'm positive 96%. This one I'm positive 12%. This one I'm positive 100%. This one I'm positive 74%. But if I'm if I'm scared, I really don't know what the future is going to be. Yeah, I can whack this number down to say 200 and see what happens. Now, let's see, that should all populate down. It did, so now as I look into the future, I could have, 
in this potential future, I have a return of 126%, 96%, negative 50%, positive 100%, positive 41%, negative 136%. So I can begin to take some guesses at where I might be. And now let's actually run the cash number. How much cash do I have to have on balance? Cash to have <clears throat> to cover my costs. So let's make that a little bigger and wrap the text. There we go. And now you're saying, well, how are we going to calculate that? That's pretty straightforward. As you see, again, all these numbers are going to keep changing. Now, I always have to have $5,000 to cover my expenses. So I take this, take that as my, my starting point, and then I subtract this number here. And it tells me, in this case, I'm positive 12,000. So let's go ahead and change that so that it makes it positive for us because that just it's easier on the brain. There. So <clears throat> uh, I, I have all the cash I need to cover my costs in this month. But what about the rest of the months? Okay, so there is my number. Now let's see what happens when I sum it. This will give me an idea as to how much I need to have as a slush fund to make sure I'm covered. <clears throat> well, in this case, I'm covered every month, uh, which is fabulous. Is it true every month or rather is this true for the whole seven month period? that I'll walk out with $42,000 every, every seven months? No, let's try it again. And let's get the numbers to update. Not quite sure how to get the numbers to update. They do it automatically, but I'm not sure how. Ah, okay, I have to put a new entry in. That's what it is. Okay, so this, this estimate shows that I'm gonna make $42,000 what about this one? Looks like pretty much every month, as long as I make anywhere between two and ten thousand, two and twenty thousand dollars. Now, maybe twenty thousand is just too adventurous, and my real numbers are coming in at around three thousand dollars max a month. Well, you guess what happens pretty quickly? That I'm always going to be negative because my costs are $5,000 a month. Let's drag this down. All right, so if my costs are $5,000 fixed and I'm only making, making as little as 200 and as much as 3,000, then this is clearly not a sustainable business model because at the end of seven months, even if everything you know, it was more or less equal, good and bad, randomly selected by fates and nature, etc. I will be down twenty-three thousand dollars in the case in in the space of seven months. So, rand between and log n, the natural log, can be useful in helping you do some very rough numbers to take a look into your potential earning future. Thank you for your time and happy computing.